Hey everyone, my name is Caitlin and welcome back to another video. Today is the wrap up of February for me where I will be going over every book I read in the month of February. I read 11 books this month which puts me at 23 for the year. I have a goal of 100 so I'm going to have to be putting in a lot of work from this point on but I definitely have a good foot forward at this point. Without further ado, let's jump right into my first read of the month which was The Hero of Ages, the final entry in the Mistborn trilogy. I did do an entire Mistborn series review and I'll leave a link in the description for that, but oh my god is this a good ending. It in fact is my favorite book of the entire series. It's so good and it culminates in one of the best endings in a trilogy ever. And yes, I said ever. I think this might be my favorite ending to a book ever. So for that reason alone you should read all of Mistborn. It's amazing though, there's there's more than just that reason. I ended up giving this a 5 out of 5 stars, big surprise, I'm a huge fan of Miss Born and it doesn't get better than this. The next book I read in the month of February is Gideon the Ninth from Tamsin Murr. I honestly was a little disappointed in this book just because I had heard so many amazing things. People hyped it up I think a little too much for me and I ended up only giving it 4 out of 5 stars when this is one of the books that I anticipated being a 5 out of 5 stars with me falling in love with the series, especially because I am all for getting more LGBTQ plus representation in the world of sci-fi and fantasy. So there was just everything in this book's corner and for me to end up not liking it as much as I thought I was going to was disappointing to say the least. That being said, me being disappointed in this book is still very high praise because as I said, I was expecting this to be a five star read. It ended up only being a four star read, which is still good and great. And I did enjoy myself. I probably will read Hero the Ninth. So I, I guess my big thing is that it just don't go into it with the amount of hype that I went into it, and you'll probably love it. I really do like the vibe, the world, the characters, everything about it was really good. It just wasn't the slam dunk that I thought it was going to be. The third book I read in the month of February was Wicked by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I was super excited for this book because I love the From Blood and Ash series, so I thought I would just love this series as well, and especially with it having a TV show coming out, I was just beyond hyped to kind of get into this book. I think I was going into it expecting From Blood and Ash 2.0, and it just wasn't of that caliber. It was honestly a little disappointing. I do love the setting of New Orleans and it kind of does have like a Shadowhunters Cassandra Clare vibe to it, but I just thought the characters were kind of underwhelming and I don't know if it, you know, all gets better in the end. I also thought the plot was like, eh. The plot was eh. Overall, I think I ended up giving this three out of five stars. Again, it was just um, a fine entry into the start of a series. But I wasn't wowed by it like I was from Blood and Ash. The next book I read was an ebook, and that is The God of Mana by Lam Deus. And I gave this three out of five stars. It's a shorter story. I actually read this as part of a subscription service called Voracious Readers, where you can get free ebooks in exchange for writing a review for them. I'm not sponsored, I just really like this service because I feel like it gives authors who are lesser known a chance to kind of get reviews and have more people reading their books and generate some traction. Anyway, I read this book as part of that service and I ended up thinking it was really philosophical. I liked what they were talking about. It basically explores grief and living up to legacies. And I thought it was really interesting and very flowery. The prose was beautiful. I just don't think it's my kind of book. I, I personally like character-driven plots, uh, political coups and wars and such, and it just wasn't that. And I really enjoy good world building, and I thought that it just, it was more about exploring the emotions of grief than it was about a specific plot happening in a specific world. And to be fair, the author does say before going into this book that that is the case. And if you are looking for something a little more epic fantasy, you're probably not going to be happy. And so yeah, I was warned. If you want a short little philosophical book about grief, definitely pick it up. You know, it's good to support lesser known authors and make sure that they have a chance just like the best of them. Obviously I was on a Kindle kick because this next book I read was the second installment in the Wicked trilogy, Torn by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I ended up liking this one less 
that I liked the first one, which is actually ultimately why I decided I'm not probably going to continue on with the series. I think that's that's where I'm at. I just, I, I don't think it's for me. Uh, at the end of the day, I love From Blood and Ash. I just don't think the Wicked trilogy in general is my vibe. I love New Orleans. I just, I don't care for the tropes in this, and I don't really care for the characters. And that was very evidently clear after reading Torn. There was also a part of it that just, just really frustrated me because they were trying to drum up drama and they kind of did this like sort of twist and it's just as the reader I was like, no, this is just annoying and frustrating that the main character is this dumb that she's not catching on. And I will not go into it any more than that. But yeah, those are my, my thoughts on the Wicked trilogy. I, I don't think it's for me. I love Jennifer L. Omer Trout's From Blood and Ash, though, so I, you still got me there. I'm so excited for Crown of Gilded Bones, you have no idea. Back to the world of physical books, my next read was Serpent and Dove by Shelby Marin. I know so many people on booktube especially hate this book. I really liked it. I thought it was good. It has all of the tropes that I love. Was it a little, you know, lackluster when it came to world building or some of the other characters? Yeah, yeah it was, but it just has all the tropes I love, so I I ended up liking it. I don't know what to say. I can see why people hate it. It definitely has problems. It's definitely tropey and campy, and there are parts where you're like, I don't know if you would forgive that, but I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna look past it, because I like it. Um, I liked the romance. People hate the romance. I have no defense for this. I liked the book. I gave it four out of five stars. I'm going to read the second one. I get it, guys. It's not a, you know, wonderful piece of literary fiction. It's, it's, it's kind of trashy. I liked it. I, <laughs> I, I feel like I can't even defend myself because I just, I just, there's no defense. I understand why people hate it. And I, I agree with those people when they say I hate it for this reason. I'm like, you're right. I love it. The next book I read, I was so absolutely excited about. It was my most anticipated read coming out in 2021, and that is, of course, A Court of Silver Flames. I also did a full review of this, both spoiler-free and spoiler-filled, and I will leave a link to that in the description. Sarah J. Mass is my favorite author. I just, I can't, she just is so amazing and I hate that people hate her because I think she's such a good author and I know she doesn't write beginnings very well when I'm talking about Throne of Glass but to be fair she wrote that when she was 16. I have so many things to say about Sarah J Maas. The point is that every book I've read by her I just end up loving and I love the Avatar universe and this was just a great installment that I didn't know if I was gonna like because I didn't like Nesta in the first trilogy but I ended up just absolutely loving it. I definitely know that there's a lot of mixed feelings on how Nesta is portrayed in this and how they address mental health issues. I have a response to that in my video, like I said, so if you do want to check that out, I have it there. I just thought it was so good. I gave it five out of five stars. I'm such a Sarah J Mass fan. I have no excuse. Her what, writing is beautiful. Her plots are great. Her characters are amazing. I mean, what more could you want? She writes amazing side characters. If you like characters, read this book, read any of the Sarah J Mass books because her characters are so good. And this is just a prime example of great character work. Enough fangirling over Sarah J Mass. The next book I read was Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Morena Garcia. I thought that this was really good. My biggest complaint about this book was that it wasn't longer. I thought that there were so many more things that I would have loved to explore and all of the trials that she faced along the way were kind of defeated a little too easily. It was like, here's a challenge. Okay, we've defeated the challenge. And I think if this was a longer book, then we would have been able to like see really cool uh, escalations of things that with how short this book is, I don't think we fully got there. But that being said, it has a super cute romance. The aesthetic and world building is amazing. And I got to learn so much more about Mexican folklore than I did previously. Next on the list, I read Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. I ended up really enjoying this. I did not think I was going to. Honestly, I thought this was going to be like a three and a half star read for me. 
and it ended up being a four-star read. Spin the Dawn is a Mulan retelling focusing on a girl, Maya, who goes in her father's stead to compete to become an imperial tailor. I love Mulan, I grew up watching Mulan, and so I thought nothing could ever live up to Mulan, and it didn't. But it did get close, and I was really impressed by that. That, that honestly elevated it more than I ever thought it was going to. I was so impressed. I loved the stories. I loved the romance. And I loved the attention to tailoring and the art and the imagery around it. It kind of feels like what this is to tailoring and creating garments and dresses is what ratatouille is to cooking. Not an exact parallel, but it does really go into the beauty of it. Not the techniques necessarily, but just the beautiful elements of creating a garment. And I really loved that. Again, my biggest complaint is that I wish it was longer. And I know I read a lot of shorter books this month, but honestly, with it being a shorter month, I just wanted to get in some of the shorter reads that were on my TBR in a month where I could hit my goal still. So I think that you'll see a lot of my complaints about these books are all going to be that I wish that they were longer. I think they could have really explored some cool themes if they had been. I will be reading the second book in this series because I did really enjoy myself and I didn't think I was going to, so look for that in my March TBR. It is the month of February, so you know I had to get at least one historical fiction thrown in there somewhere. And what I chose was a book that actually came out on the 24th of February, The Gentle Art of Fortune Hunting, which I did actually do a full review of. Again, I will just put that link in the description if you're curious. But this is basically about two siblings who have grown up destitute and set their sights on an heir and an heiress in London. So if that is interesting to you, I would highly recommend it. Again, this is one that I went in not expecting much and I ended up actually really loving it. It's a four out of five star read for me. It is an LGBTQ plus read as well. So if you're working with the Diversify Your Bookshelf Challenge and you want some more representation from the queer community, that's a good option as well. To cap off my reads this month, I am almost done with this book. It's Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. I thought that maybe I shouldn't include it in this video, but I figured there's still today and tomorrow left of February, and I'm, I'm so close. I can finish this. This is only 435 pages. I can absolutely finish this. So I'm including it in my February reads. I have not finished it at this point yet, so maybe my star rating will change, but so far I'm about a, th a third, a little over a third of the way through, and I love Robin Hobb's writing style. I initially picked up this book when Peru's Project, one of my favorite booktubers, read it last year and ended up just absolutely adoring it, and Robin Hobb quickly became one of her favorite authors. Seeing as we have very similar tastes from what I can gather, I knew that I was definitely going to have to pick it up in 2021, and so far I am pleasantly surprised. I am really enjoying Robin Hobb's writing style, which is both complex and beautiful while also being easy to understand. I love Fitz, the main character. He's just so sweet, and I love Chade and Burrick, and I know I'm saying all of this, and then one of them is going to die because, again, I haven't finished it yet, and I'm sure, knowing my luck, that I'm going to talk about how much I love them just to have someone be like, just you wait. And yeah, no, that would be awful. It's probably gonna happen. I've just jinxed myself so much, so entirely. Either way, I don't have a star rating for this just yet, but I am very excited to finish it. I actually went ahead and just bought the rest of the series today because I am enjoying it so much. And I'm very excited to see what happens. People say it just gets better. This book is about a young boy named Fitz who finds out that he is the bastard of a young prince named Chivalry who was first in line to become king. There's obviously an uproar over this news, and as he moves into Buckkeep to be with the rest of the royal family, there are certain things he must learn along the way, and he becomes ingrained in this political scheming family, essentially. I'm trying not to give too much of it away, but it's very good. I, I think you can guess what happens by the name. But anyways, I'm enjoying it. I'm hoping to finish it by Sunday so that I can fully have it be part of February. I think I can do it because I have today and tomorrow off. But uh, if I don't, I'll just count it as February. I won't count it as March as well. So there we are. And that is it for the month of February. I had a lot of books that I ended up absolutely loving this month. A Court of Silver Flames obviously being at the top of that list. And I also had a lot of books that I was very 
meh on that I, I was just not too happy with. So hopefully March I'll have a lot more positive reviews to give and let's look forward to that. As far as March goes, I am kind of trying to go a little bit outside of my preferred genres for that month, just to kind of expand my horizons and experience books that I don't usually read and maybe I'll find something I love. That being said, there will still be a ton of YA and regular fantasy on those lists, and I will have plenty to say about those. I am in the middle of so many series right now that I have not finished yet. So until the next video, have a good one.